I want to continue now my series on the spiritual gifts. And on this part, which is part three, I'm going to be talking to you about the power gifts. These are the gifts of healing, prophecy, discernment, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the gift of speaking in tongues. And I know many of you have been looking forward to me covering these gifts in particular. So I'm going to get into this. We call them the power gifts on this edition of Spirit Church here on Encounter TV. First, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in worship, and then we're going to get right into this lesson. And I want to tell you about these wonderful gifts, and I believe that God has given you some of these gifts as well. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. And I have heard a sound coming on the winds, changing hearts and minds. Healing brokenness, I feel a generation breaking through despair. I hear a generation full of faith declare, and our song it will be. Out of the darkness we will rise and sing Oh, He is faithful, He is glorious And He is Jesus Oh, my hope is in Him He is freedom, He is healing right now he is hope and joy and love and peace and life Whoa. Whoa. I have seen a light like the break of dawn giving blind men sight letting lame men walk i feel a generation breaking through despair i hear a generation full of faith declare and our song it will be out of the darkness we will rise and sing oh he is faithful he is glorious and he is jesus and he is Jesus oh my hope is in him he is freedom he is healing right now he is hope and joy and love and peace and life So our primary text is going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And again, I'm talking to you about the power gifts. And I know that when I start talking about the power gifts, this stirs the excitement in many of you because these gifts are exciting. They're special abilities that the Holy Spirit gives to us that have a supernatural application. And I want to get right into this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we're going to read verses 1 through 11. Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the spiritual abilities the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshiping speechless idols. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Holy Spirit of God will curse Jesus, 
and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Remember in part one of this series, I talked about how we can avoid paganism or gifts just for the gift's sake. We need the substance of Jesus. So the spirit behind the spiritual gifts will always ultimately point to Jesus. Verse four, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. So there you see all three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit present here. And I believe that was mentioned for two reasons. One, the Trinity is the greatest example of unity, Trinity, triunity. And so the gifts of the Holy Spirit work best when we are united. And also, I wanted to emphasize that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were all very intentional about giving you your spiritual gift. So it was those three together who decided what spiritual gift you would get. And again, I covered that in part one. Verse seven, a spiritual gift is given to each of us. So every single person has a gift. You cannot say, I don't have one. And then it goes on to say, so we can help each other. To one person, the spirit gives the ability of wise advice, so the word of wisdom. To another, the same spirit gives a message of special knowledge or the word of knowledge. Verse nine, the same spirit gives great faith or the gift of faith to another. And to someone else, the one spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages or in tongues, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. Verse 11, it is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. So I wanna first take a look at the gift of prophecy, which we just read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 10. Now it's important to note that the gift of prophecy is different than the gift of the prophet, which we read about last week in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. So, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 tells us about the leadership gifts that God has given to the body of Christ. And really, they are more than just gifts. They are positions. They are a part of the structure of the overall body that God has given to us so that we can find edification, guidance, and all of those things that come with having leaders in our lives. But the gift of prophecy differs from the office of the prophet. So there's the apostle, the pastor, the teacher, the prophet, and the evangelist. Now remember, any believer can give counsel and guide one another, but not every believer will be a pastor. Any believer can start a ministry work that God has given them to start, but not every believer will be an apostle. Every believer is definitely called to evangelize the lost, but not every believer will be given the office of the evangelist. Every believer should know the word well enough to explain it to someone who desires understanding of the word, but not every believer will function in the office of the teacher. And finally, to make my point, believers can prophesy, but not every believer who prophesies is a prophet. So Romans chapter 12, verse six says, in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. In other words, speak out with the measure of faith that God has given to you. God anoints all believers. God has saved all believers and God values all believers equally. But as far as the gifts and the functions of those gifts go, not every believer is in the same place. Look, if you can grow in something, that means there are levels to it, especially my generation wants to believe that all believers are on the same level spiritually. I got news for you, it's not the case. And it goes the same with the spiritual gifts. Not everyone is as strong in their gift as the next person. And not everyone walks in the anointing at the same level as other people. Now, 
Can every believer walk in the fullness, the capacity of the gifts that God has given to them? Of course. But in order to get there, one must exercise those gifts. One must step out in faith. One must maintain a prayer life and a devotion to the Word. And so there is growth to the gifts. There is growth in your function in a gift. And where there is growth, where there is room for growth, there are levels. So the Bible tells us in Romans 12, 6, to prophesy, to speak out with as much faith as God has given you. There's a certain measure of faith that God has given to you, and we'll talk about that in a moment when I talk about the gift of faith. So the gift of prophecy comes on believers. The gift of prophecy can be used. In fact, the book of, of Corinthians tells us that we should desire the most expedient or the most useful gifts. Well, if someone needs to hear from the Lord a prophetic word, the best gift to have in that moment is not going to be the gift of healing. If somebody needs a miracle in their body, a healing in their body, the best gift to have in that moment is not the gift of tongues. So I believe that the best gift to have is the one that's needed most in that moment. So to some degree, I believe that every believer can function in all of the gifts. Now I know about what Paul the Apostle wrote in the rhetorical writings where he asked, do all have gifts of this? Do all have gifts of that? And we're going to address that next week on part four when I talk about discovering your spiritual gifts and also go over what I call the service gifts. But focusing this point now on just the gift of prophecy, I want to make it clear that every believer can hear from God. And if every believer can hear from God, then every believer has the ability to repeat what they've heard, and that is the gift of prophecy. Revelation tells us that the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. If you can encourage, if you can testify, if you can explain the gospel, that is to some degree prophecy. In fact, preaching and proclamation and prophecy are pretty much one in the same. Now, do all of us function in these gifts with specifics and at the same level? No, I mentioned this before to you. There's personal prophecy, that's one-on-one -on -one encouragement to the person in front of you or one-on-one -on -one speaking what God has impressed on your heart for them. There is corporate prophecy, this is to the body of Christ. You have to be stronger in your gift to do that. And you have to be even stronger in your gift to give regional prophecy and even stronger so to give national prophecy. And you have to be even stronger than that in your gift to give global prophecy. The Lord anoints us and He uses us according to our gift, according to the measure of faith that we've been given. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 39 tells us this. So, my dear brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and don't forbid speaking in tongues. He's saying to covet to prophesy, earnestly desire to prophesy. It is okay to want to prophesy. In fact, it is okay to want to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So even though the gift of prophecy is different than the office of the prophet in that it's not a part of the ecclesiastical structure or the structure of the church or the leadership or governing of the church, it still can function within the church and though you may not have the title or the office of a prophet, you can still function in the gift of prophecy. So prophecy reveals the future. Prophecy reveals the thoughts and the motives of men. Prophecy speaks for God. The one who functions in the gift of prophecy is very gifted in hearing God and repeating those messages to other people. So that's number one, the gift of prophecy. And again, I know there's debate about whether or not all believers can function in all gifts. I'm going to address that a little bit next week. But for now, just to maybe satisfy the questions that might be in your mind, just know that if there's a desire in you for the gifts, it might have been God who put it there. Secondly, I want to talk about the gift of discernment. Now, this is different somewhat from the gift of prophecy, whereas prophecy is hearing the oracles of God and talking about the future or revealing a certain meaning in situations basically speaking for God in any sense, the gift of discernment is the gift that can distinguish the subtleties between the flesh, the spirit, and the satanic. In other words, the gift of discernment can help you distinguish. In fact, that is what the gift of discernment means. Discernment means to be able to distinguish. And so you can discern spirits. I can distinguish between 
whether someone comes in an impure spirit or a pure spirit. Now, this is very closely tied with prophecy. It's somewhat similar, but that subtle difference is that it has more to do with distinguishing between the spirits as opposed to relaying information about certain situations or people or even the future. So the gift of discernment helps you to tell whether or not someone who comes into your church has a good heart or a bad heart. Now, many people abuse this gift, they, or the title of the gift. You don't know how many people have come up to me and says, they say, I have the gift of discernment, and the Lord tells me you're a false prophet. And, you know, they say these things, and really, the gift of discernment, let me just tell you straight up, the gift of discernment is not the gift of criticism. The gift of discernment is not the gift of being dogmatic. The gift of discernment is not the gift of being mean-spirited and critical and to nitpick. That is not the gift of discernment. The gift of discernment is simply that you're able to distinguish between flesh, spirit, and the demonic. You're, be able, you're able to distinguish between all of those spirits. Now, someone may claim to have the gift of discernment, but that doesn't mean that everything they say is true. The same goes for the gift of prophecy. Be careful of those who give you words. You weigh and test. The scripture tells us to test the spirits. So those who say they have discernment, Test the ones who say they have discernment. But ultimately, we trust the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to help be our foundation in guiding us in discerning all of these things. So the gift of discernment, I want to emphasize again, is not the gift of criticism. And people will say things that come out of their flesh or come out of their emotions or come out of the way that they were raised, and they'll pretend that it's God, or they even lie to themselves and they tell themselves that they're hearing from God, but really their discernment is nothing more than their own personal preference. So be careful that your own personal preference has not tainted the gift of discernment. So that's where you have to be in the Spirit. And these gifts only work in unity. These gifts only work in the Spirit. You can't operate in these gifts in the flesh. I knew of a lady who went to a Christian concert. Now, my brother-in-law is in a band or was in a band that was reaching out to various people in our generation. And they did it through music that sounded rough on the ears. Now, it wasn't demonic in nature. The lyrics were biblical. They sang and they wrote from the spirit. But the sound of the instruments themselves were a little abrasive to some people. And so people would say things like, oh, well, that, that, they're demonic. I, I feel grieved in my spirit. I heard one lady say about that type of music. She says, I feel the Holy Spirit is grieved over this music. And really, the thing was, she just was bothered at the music. And so she used her own personal preference in the place of discernment. And she came up with that conclusion, which was not really of God. And I know that because there were people be, being saved and giving their hearts to Jesus through that band's music. So be careful that when prophesying, when operating to get to discernment, that you're not flowing in your own preference, that you're not flowing by your own intellect or your emotion or the way you see things. You have to flow in the Spirit. The next gift I want to talk to you about is the gift of healing. Now, this one is powerful. And if you have this gift, step out in faith and use it. The gift of healing is basically what it looks like. You're able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Now, Mark chapter 16 tells us that the believer, those who believe the word, will be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Jesus did not limit healing to just one select group of people. However, the one with the gift of healing has a stronger, more potent ability to heal the sick than the average believer. That, and look, I, again, I know people don't like to hear this, but otherwise, why is there a gift of healing if every believer can lay hands on the sick and see them recover? You can develop that gift. You can acquire that gift from the Lord, but it is a gift. And so this gift of healing brings about miraculous healing in their bodies. It brings about rapid healing or healing that would otherwise not naturally occur. For example, when I was a kid, I broke my arm. I broke my left arm and I broke it in three places. In fact, it, I remember it was incredibly painful. They had to put uh, screws in my arm to, keep, to help it to heal better. Now, we were told that it was going to take months for my arm to heal. My grandmother, she's Holy Ghost. My grandfather, he's Holy Ghost. My mom and my dad and my family they gathered around after I got the doctor's report. They were very polite and cordial to the doctor. They took me to the doctor. But after we received that report, 
they got anointing oil, they laid hands on my arm, and they prayed for the Lord to bring about healing. I went in for a checkup just weeks later because I had the cast on just for a few weeks. And I went into a checkup and the doctors said, okay, let's take the cast off. My dad said, wait a minute. No, no, no. You can't take the cast off. It's supposed to be coming off in about six months and in several months. And the doctor said, well, actually, no, it's um, we looked at it. And by the looks of it, it looks like it's healed. In fact, it looks like it's been healed for several weeks now completely. And so they took the cast off and I was completely healed. That was the gift of healing in operation. It speeds up the healing process. It can also bring about healing in blind eyes and whatnot. Now, this is where I want to tie this in with the gift of miracles, which is the other gift that's also talked about in 1 Corinthians 12, 10. Now, the gift of healing and miracles go hand in hand because that healing was miraculous. The gift of miracles goes a step further, though. And I'm not saying necessarily that it's more powerful, but it goes a step further in, in a different direction, I should say, not necessarily in a step up. The gift of healing has to do with ailments and sickness and pain and problems with the physical body. Even emotional healing can be brought about because there is mental healing that needs to take place because of physical ailments in the brain. But the gift of miracles has more to do with multiplying food, has more to do with bringing about outcomes of situations that should not otherwise be. When I think of miracles, I think of Jesus walking on water. I think of turning the water into wine. I think of the fig tree withering. I think of the stopping of the weather. And I, I do know men of God. In fact, there was a pastor who was telling me a story. And, and it's a little humorous. I hope you find the humor in it. This pastor, he's in Nicaragua, I believe. And He's in the middle of this crusade, open air. It's outdoor. There are people gathered on the dirt floor. They have a stage set up. There are hundreds gathered, and this pastor's preaching the gospel. And then out of nowhere, it begins to pour in this little village where they're having this crusade. And the people start to disperse. And the man says, wait, wait, wait. If God stops the rain, will you return? And, and the people didn't really respond, so he rebukes. He says, in the name of Jesus, I command this rain to stop. And they said it was like someone turned off a faucet. It just stopped right then and there. Funny part is the pastor who was hosting him leans in his ear. He says, brother, um, there's, been a, there's been a drought here and they were praying for rain for several months now. And you just stopped the rain. So he used his gift of miracles. Of course, the Lord later brought the rain back. But I thought that was a humorous story. But that's more along the lines of the gift of miracles. In fact, I know... My father, while ministering in the Philippines, the same thing happened to him. He's at an outdoor crusade in the Philippines. They're out there preaching. The rain starts pouring. The people start leaving. And same thing with him. He said, in the name of Jesus, I command this rain to stop. It stops. They said it was like someone turned off a faucet and the people began to come back and enjoy the service. Now, that is miraculous. Those are the gifts of miracles. You see of you hear of uh, coincidences and you see God do various different things outside of the physical healing of the body, the miracles that take place. People just seem to operate in that. They have this gift to bring about these outcomes that would not have otherwise been. And they're very strange outcomes, but that is the gift of miracles. And that, I think, is a very exciting gift because you never quite know what's going to happen or where God is going to take you next. Then there is the word of knowledge, which is found also in 1 Corinthians 12, 8, and the word of wisdom. Now, at the risk of making this sound mundane, I do want to just say that the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom are very simple. The word of wisdom is wisdom that is supernaturally given by the Spirit, and the word of knowledge is knowledge that is supernaturally given by the Spirit. It's that simple. So wisdom, the word of wisdom, is the Holy Spirit... Now get this, it's the Holy Spirit thinking through the individual. Now how powerful is that? That you can assess a situation and the Lord will give you His wisdom for that situation. That's powerful. That is a powerful gift. And I think it's one of the underrated power gifts. The word of wisdom is so needed today. Because we have a lot of wacky behavior in the church, and the word of wisdom could really help bring some discernment and balance back to the church. But the word of wisdom is simply put, wisdom given by the Spirit. Now, the word of knowledge, it has more of a, and I hesitate to say this, but you'll understand what I mean. 
the word of knowledge has more of a wow, like a look at that. That's amazing. It has more of a, um, I, I, that's the word I'll use. It has more of a wow factor to it because people's jaws drop. How did you know that information? The word of wisdom, not so much because it's basically more um, the insight on how to navigate certain situations and how to solve certain problems with the aid of the Holy Spirit. Whereas the word of knowledge seems to have more of a wow effect because it's information that people have themselves, that they know, that they immediately connect with. So there's that emotional response. So the word of knowledge is basically knowledge and information that comes to you that you should not otherwise know. I remember the first time I functioned in this gift, I was asking the Lord for several of these gifts. And there was three gifts that I was asking for. I was asking for the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, and the word of knowledge. Of course, I wanted all the others too, but those were the three I was really saying, Lord, I pray, give me the gift of healing. I pray, give me the, the gift of miracles. Lord, give me the word of knowledge. And I wanted to use those gifts. But I'll never forget the first time I functioned in the word of knowledge. I was in my church. It was after service. And my friends and I were all just hanging out at church after the service. And I remember one of the girls in the church was standing there. And I looked at her and all of a sudden, I just had this information in my head. I didn't try to read her. I wasn't calling upon God, trying to get information. I just looked at her and as my, just like you know I'm wearing a cardigan. You just know it. You're looking at me, I'm wearing a cardigan. It's just information in your head. It's mundane. You know it. It's not a big deal. I looked at her and I just had information. And I turned to her, I said, I know this, I said, were you talking to a friend on Friday who was crying leaning up against her locker, sitting down, holding onto her knees and sobbing, telling you that she wanted to kill herself? And this girl's jaw dropped. She said, yes. I said, and she wanted to kill herself because of the way her father treats her. He's verbally abusive. And she just, she looked like just petrified. She, she said, how did you know that? And it was in that instant I realized that information should not have been known by me. I realized there was something else happening. And I thought, I don't know how I knew that. And I even told her, I said, I don't know. I just said it. I wasn't trying to be spiritual. I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't trying to read her or flow in a gift. It just came out. And that was my first encounter with the word of knowledge. Since then, I found it very useful to work in a cooperation with the gift of healing. In fact, there's a couple prophet friends of mine who, when I'm praying for the sick or ministering, I'll tell the prophet, I'll say, go find the people who need healing. And they'll pull them out. They'll say, this lady needs this. And they would have pointed out to me, and I'm able to lay hands and, and pray for their healing. So the gifts can work together. So that was my first encounter with the word of knowledge. But that's what the word of knowledge is. It's information that God gives you. So the word of wisdom is wisdom that God gives you. And then there is the gift of faith, which is found in 1 Corinthians 12, 9. Now remember, I talked to you about the measure of faith. That's found in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. But the measure of faith is different from the gift of faith. The measure of faith is something that works for you. But remember that we read in 1 Corinthians 12 that the spiritual gifts are given so that we can serve one another, so that we can aid one another. So this gift of faith cannot be faith for me. It has to be faith for someone else because the gifts are meant for someone else. So the gift of faith is the ability to stir the faith of other people around you. Now, this one is powerful. This one works so well with the gift of healing because it takes faith to be healed. So when you get around people and you have the gift of faith, you start stirring them. I know people who the gift of faith is so strong on them that just sitting in a car talking to them about random things starts to stir your faith. I know a man up in Northern California who has this gift like I, I've not seen anybody function really in the gift of faith. Like he just knows that God is going to do things for him. And he's a multimillionaire businessman who just by faith has done things. And I'll tell I'm uh, honest truth. I take, I will fly my team members up with me when I travel there. And I'll say, just sit and talk with this man. And I'll just leave them for a couple hours and they'll come out and they say, we can win the world. We're ready to do this. And faith is just stirred in their heart. And that gift of faith is so strong on this man. I'm telling you, we can literally have a conversation about casual things in life. 
And as we're talking about those casual things, faith, I feel it building inside of my spirit. That is the gift of faith to where you can stir the faith in other people when you talk. You stir the faith in other people just by being around them, just by them seeing the look on your face, just by them seeing your countenance, by being around your person, their faith comes alive and something starts stirring in them. That's a powerful gift. That is the gift of faith. Now, I'm going to spend a little bit of time on these next two gifts. It's the gift of tongues and the gift of, of interpretation of tongues. Now, you can get more on the gift of tongues. I did a full teaching on this particular gift, the gift of tongues, in a video called The Truth About Praying in Tongues. Again, the video is called The Truth About Praying in Tongues, and you can find it on Encounter TV on my YouTube channel. Those of you watching here on YouTube, you'll be able to see it right on our channel. For those of you watching this anywhere else, go to youtube.com slash encounter TV and look up the teaching, the truth about praying in tongues. You may also be able to find it in the app and the website, but it's just easier just to go to YouTube and type that in, the truth about praying in tongues. So I'm going to give you some teaching on tongues, but a very detailed teaching. You, you, may have, you may come up with some questions or objections as I go, but all of those questions and objections are likely answered in the truth about praying in tongues. Okay, so I want to read a verse to you to help lay the foundation for understanding this gift of tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12 say this, No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. Verse 12, And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. The scripture in 1 Corinthians 2, and you should read the whole chapter, talks about how the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God. That's powerful. He searches the deep things of God, and then the Holy Spirit communicates these things not to our mind, not to our heart, not to our soul, but to our spirit. And so this deep communication, this deep fellowship that is occurring 24-7 is happening in the inner man. The inner man is fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, spirit to spirit, the depths of God connecting with the depths of your being. Nobody knows God like the Holy Spirit and nobody knows you like your own spirit. And those two connect at a very deep level. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, before I read it, let me qualify it by saying that many preachers read this and they read Romans chapter 8, verse 26, and they say, see, here's the gift of tongues. But Romans chapter 8, verse 26 is not talking about the gift of tongues. It's talking about the communication that happens spirit to spirit that we just read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Okay, here's Romans chapter 8, verse 26. And the Holy Spirit, helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. I want you to really think about that. I know people who've traveled all around the world to have powerful men of God lay hands on them. I know people who will travel across the, the state, across the country, across the world to sit in under the anointing of a man or a woman of God, to sit in under a teaching, to sit in at an event, to sit in at a worship service because they want to be in the atmosphere. But I want you to think about this. The Holy Spirit Himself prays for you. He's your greatest intercessor. The Holy Spirit Himself lifts you to the Father. The Holy Spirit Himself speaks things over you, declares truths over you, declares breakthrough and healing and revelation and truth over you. He declares powerful things over you. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12 tell us there's this inner fellowship that's taking place, that the Holy Spirit reveals to us the depths of God, spirit to spirit. And Romans 8, 26 tells us that the Holy Spirit prays for us. Where does that take place? It takes place in that same intimate place of fellowship, that inner fellowship, the inner life, the inner relationship. It's all inside. And so this powerful mingling of spirits is taking place. And what comes out of that is the gift of tongues. I'm not saying the gift of tongues is the only expression of that, so don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm saying that this 
this fellowship, this reality that we experience deep within the inner man, this stirring goes from the spirit to the soul to the mind to the body. Jesus said, out of your inner man shall flow rivers of living water from within to without, from within to without, spirit, soul, body, spirit, soul, body, from within to without. So this fellowship, this prayer, this mingling from spirit to spirit is what's happening on the inside of you. And to get that to surface, that's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not the receiving of the Holy Spirit. You receive Him at salvation. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is the releasing of the Holy Spirit to where He floods over you, but from within you. You're not receiving the flood waters from without. You're releasing the flood waters from within, and then you become baptized. I know this is deep. Pray the Lord would help you follow this. But, you know, like I said, go to that teaching, and, and I really get into detail there. But the gift of tongues eventually is what manifests physically, because from the spirit to the soul to the body to the mouth to the tongue, words come out, and there's spirit. So there are three different functions to this gift. Now, this is why people are so confused about speaking in tongues, because they don't recognize that the Bible describes it in three different ways. And these three different ways cannot possibly um, all be under one function of the gift. And I'll show you from Scripture how that is so. Now, the first type of tongue, and I'm going to give you all three, the three different types of tongues. There's the personal tongue, there's the proof tongue, and there's the prophetic tongue. Now, I gave them those names, but I gave them those names according to their function. So, there are some who will say, the gift of tongues cannot be this babbling that you hear. It's a different language, really. That's not the case. It cannot be the case. How do I know that? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 2 through 4, just squelches that idea. There's no possible way it can be an earthly language, and here's why. For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, he will be talking only to God, since people won't be able to understand you. You will be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it will all be mysterious. But one who prophesies strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them. Verse 4, a person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally, but one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. Now you have to understand in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul is contrasting the gift of tongues with the gift of prophecy. He is not saying that the gift of tongues is bad. He's saying that the gift of prophecy is better because it edifies everybody else. But here he is saying that the gift of tongues edifies self. He's saying nobody understands. It's the Holy Spirit speaking through you mysteries that cannot be understood by, stood by anybody. Why? Because it's not an earthly language. There's no possible way it can be an earthly language because the Bible tells us nobody understands. So that's the personal tongue. You pray in tongues to build self. Number two, there's the proof tongue. Now this is what you saw in Acts chapter 2, verse 6, where the scripture says, When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. Now, follow this thought because it's a little complicated. The gift of tongues they heard in their own language, I want you to think about this, was not each individual praying a different language. They heard the entire group speaking in their own language, each individual. That means they heard what God wanted them to hear, but that's not what the believers were speaking. It says the believers collectively, look at, read it again. They were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. So the believers were speaking collectively each individual language. Now, how could that have been? It's because the hearer heard through the gift of tongues their own language, and that is the proof tongue. In fact, the scripture tells us that the gift of tongues is a sign to the unbeliever. It cannot be a sign to the unbeliever if it's something that we're to keep within the church and in our private life. It's just not so. 
Number three, the prophetic tongue. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10 tells us, He gives one person the power to perform miracles and the other the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages or in tongues, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. Now here is the prophetic tongue. And this is the one that Paul heavily regulated in 1 Corinthians 14. But the other two functions he was not addressing. And again, more on that in my teaching the truth about praying in tongues. Now 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 39 tells us, again we read it, So my dear brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and don't forbid speaking in tongues. Which brings me to the final gift we're talking about here, the gift of tongues interpretation, and it's simply what it sounds like, it's the gift of tongues being interpreted. So in a service, the way this is supposed to work, if someone speaks in tongues to disrupt the service, not speaks in tongues to edify themselves, they can do that during the worship and during the time that they're allotted. But if someone stands to disrupt the service, to give a message from God through the speaking of that tongue, that must be interpreted, otherwise they just disrupted the service for no reason. So when that person stands to edify everyone and speaks in tongues, someone else is supposed to interpret that. I remember I was standing in a church service one time and someone stood up very boldly and they just began to pray in tongues and the whole service was disrupted. And let me tell you something, the power of God hit that building. We felt the glory of the Holy Spirit fill that room. It was like a, like I always tell you, like a cloud rested on the room. And you knew God was doing something there. That was powerful. Something was stirring. But then nobody gave an interpretation. And everybody in that service left thinking that person who stood up and spoke in tongues was being disobedient or out of order. And I thought, that's kind of odd because the power of God moved. The anointing was there. There was a word being spoken. I thought, why are they blaming that guy? Perhaps somebody in the crowd was supposed to stand and give the interpretation, but did not. So we can't always blame the one who stands and gives the tongues. Sometimes it's somebody who's not functioning in their gift to interpret. So it's basically a prophetic gift, the gift of tongues. Now, that does it for the lesson here. And I'm going to just quickly name the gifts again, the gift of prophecy discernment, healing, miracles, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, faith, tongues, and the gift of interpreting tongues. Now, I believe God's giving you, has given you these gifts. The scripture tells us that each one has been given a gift, and then it goes on to list these nine gifts. Now, in this context, I believe that means that you have at least one of these that the scripture is talking about. I believe every believer has at least one of these supernatural gifts. I mean, they're all supernatural in that they're backed and empowered by the Holy Spirit. But the power gifts are supernatural also in application in that the function of it itself results in something that is supernatural that anybody, an unbeliever watching would go, wow, that's something different there. This is, this is unique. So I believe God has given you one of these nine gifts. I truly believe that. And next week, I want to talk to you about how to discover your spiritual gifts. I want to pray with you now. And let's pray God would continue to edify you. Let's pray that God would stir your faith for the spiritual gifts. Let's pray now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one receiving this prayer right now. And I ask, Lord, that you would stir their faith. Lord, stir up the gift that is within them. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would not only stir the gifts now, but you would impart the gifts. You would impart the gifts of healing and discernment and the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge and the gift of faith. Impart the gift of miracles, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Impart the gift of tongues and the gift of interpreting tongues. Every single one of these gifts, let them flow, Father. And I pray in Jesus' name, you would give that one boldness. You would give that one faith to step out and act and operate in the power of the Holy Spirit. Use us as your vessels, Lord. We surrender all. Let our hands be your hands. Heal through them. Let our mouths be your mouth. 
speak through them. Let our eyes be your eyes, discern through them, Lord. Let our ears be your ears, let us hear the oracles of the Spirit. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in their lives right now. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to say it. If you receive it, say it out loud. Say, Amen. Well, that's it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like to know how you could join the Spirit family, then go ahead and go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Now, it is 100% free to become a member of Spirit Church, and the benefit there is that you'll receive an email from me every single week on Sunday morning so we have church together online, Spirit Church Online. It's I like to say we gather in spirit. You'll get that email, you'll get that teaching, and you'll be able to even reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry team. And we're going to back you. When you join Spirit Church, you're joining thousands of believers from all around the world. So join today and be a part of what God is doing in Spirit Church. I want to read your comments now. And this is from last week's video, The Gifts of the Holy Spirit, Leadership Gifts. And I even asked you to comment on what you felt your gifts were. And in fact, I want you to do that here. Of the nine power gifts, I want to tell me either which one you want God to use you in or which one you know God has given you. So let's look at the first comment here. Andrew writes, Hello, Brother David. My wife and three teenage children watch your teaching message once a week on YouTube, and we are blessed. We are all growing in our walk with the Lord through your ministry. God bless you. Writing from Queensland, Australia. Well, Brother Andrew, I pray that you, your wife, and your three teenage children are blessed. I love you guys all the way out here from Southern California. Benjamin writes, Thank you, Brother David. I really sensed a calling to be a pastor and teacher in my life. Your teachings really helped me to grow passionately and hungry for the Lord. God bless you more, brother. Well, God bless you, Benjamin, and may he anoint you in those areas. Isaiah writes, Praise God. Thank you for this teaching, Brother David. God gave me a gift of prophecy, and this video really helped me. God bless your family, and God bless your boldness. I pray that gift would be stirred sevenfold in Jesus' name. Evelyn Nambuya writes, Thank you, Brother David, for that powerful message. May God continue blessing you, and may God continue blessing you as well. Phil writes, This is a great sermon series, Pastor David. I feel that my spiritual gift is works. Thank you for sharing some of your background with us regarding your upbringing and education. God bless you and everyone at Encounter TV. And God bless you too. Thank you for writing to us. Ryan Magden writes, and this is the final comment that I'll be reading from last week's video. Thank you for this very encouraging message, Brother David. I have been trying to live through the Holy Spirit and find my spiritual gift. As always, Stephen is awesome as, at worship. I can feel the love and passion Praying you find the right property. God bless your ministry. I'm going to tell you what Ryan is talking about in just a moment. But, you know, I'm going to be talking next week about how to discover your spiritual gift. And these teachings, I believe, are going to stir you to a different level in faith. So be sure to watch next week's teaching. I'm going to tell you how to discover your spiritual gifts. And let me hear from you. Comment on this video. If you're watching this on YouTube, participate in the comments. I read all the comments from YouTube um, I should say all the comments that are read are from YouTube. I don't read all the comments. We have some staff who do that. But all the comments that are read are from YouTube. So if you're watching this from elsewhere, get over to YouTube and make a comment on our video. Tell me in this video, I want to know, as I said before, what spiritual gifts has God given to you? Or what spiritual gifts do you desire? Don't feel like you're bragging. Just be bold. Put it out there in faith. And I'd like to read those next week. So Ryan Magden wrote about us praying to find the right property. Now, for those of you who don't know, we are raising our monthly support. Now, as a ministry, we will always be raising monthly support. But there are those seasons of ministry where we can set goals and markers that motivate people to partner a little bit faster, at a faster pace than they normally would have before. So that marker we've come up against now in this season of ministry is a brand new ministry facility. Now, we don't want a facility just to be fancy. We are outgrowing this place big time. We're outgrowing the office space. We're outgrowing, we, we can't really accommodate a studio audience with the parking. It's just, it, it, we, we really need a new space. So 
We are working toward a new ministry facility and expanding our events. This means doing more events more often. So in order to do that, we're raising our monthly support. At the beginning of this campaign, I asked for a thousand new $30 a month supporters. Here's where we are now. We are so close, people of God, we are so close. And we are doing this together. Let me tell you why we do this. We do this to win souls to Jesus. They will hear the gospel and they shall be saved in Jesus' name. And we're pushing our efforts now to greater levels than before. This ministry is growing, this ministry is expanding, and I want you to be a part of it. I want you to be able to say, we were there from the beginning. We were there when that ministry first started to bud. And I'm telling you, we've had growth spurt after growth spurt, and I feel another one coming on. We are poised to do more for the kingdom than we ever have been before, and I need your partnership for it. So we're asking people to sign up to become $30 a month supporters. When you sign up to become a $30 a month supporter, here's where we are. Take a look again. We're not that far. These are $30 a month supporters. So that's where we are. And when you sign up to become a $30 a month supporter, you're helping us to do this properly. I don't like to pressure people into giving, which is why we take steps of faith with wisdom. So when we reach a certain level of support, we take another step. And it still is a step of faith, believe me. But what we're actually working toward, again, is that new facility and being able to expand our events. And we're doing this for souls. With that new facility, listen to this. With that new facility, we're going to be able to bring you in weekly as a studio audience for these tapings. We're going to be able to go live from the studio and do more live broadcasts. We're going to be able to put out more content than ever before. And we want to open a 24-7 prayer room. So basically, and I'm not starting a church, but it's almost going to be like our own church and it's going to be powerful. Now, the second phase of this is that we're going to do more events more often in more places. When we reach a certain level of support, that's going to enable us to go to more states, go to more countries and do more miracle services like you've been seeing on our YouTube channel recently. So here's what I need you to do. It just comes down to this. I need you to sign up to become a $30 a month supporter. If this ministry has blessed you, if you've received and you want to help me, you want to partner with me. Look, I know many of you who watch this, you feel that connection and you, you feel, you feel I, I feel like I know David. I feel like I know him personally. I receive comments like that all the time. I feel like I know you personally. Well, let me tell you something. In the spirit, we're connected. In the spirit, we're in this together. Listen to me. Mark my words. We're going to pack stadiums together and we're going to see thousands of people come to the Lord. Mark my words. I know it in faith. I see it but I need your help. You look at the large ministries of today, you say, how, did that, how does that happen? It happens by this, people like you just saying, I'm gonna partner. So I'm asking you to partner with me today. When you partner with me, I'm gonna send you signed either Carriers of the Glory or 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare as my initiation gift to you for being my partner. So sign up today. Those of you who have signed on, thank you for signing up and know that your gift every month is going toward the gospel. So do that today. If you are watching this on YouTube, at the end of this video, a red button is going to appear and you're gonna be able to click that button and it's gonna take you right to where you can become a partner. So do that right when this video ends. Maybe you've been saying in your heart, I've been waiting to do it. I wanna see how the campaign is going. Look, if everybody who watches this video signs up right now, we're done with this. We can, we can go on to the next phase of the, the, the renovations of the place. But these monthly costs are covered the lease and the insurance and the, there's so much that goes with it. So let's get, let's get this first phase done. We need those thousand new $30 month supporters so we can look for the building. Once we get it, then we can start renovating and it's gonna be awesome. So here's what I'm asking. Now is the time, this is the moment. Right here, right now. You're watching this and you can do that $30 a month. Even if you do the five, $10 a month, sign up right now and say, I'm gonna partner with David. If everyone who watches this, you, you gotta take this personal. You can't say, oh, somebody else some other time. You gotta take this personal. If everyone who watches this right now goes and signs up, we're done and we can move on to the next phase. So do that today. Help us launch this facility. Help us launch this new network of content that we're gonna be putting out. It's going to be awesome and we're gonna win souls and I know the Lord will bless you for it. Remember, the link's gonna appear at the end of this video. Well, that's it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe. 
Also, help me win souls by spreading the gospel through events and media. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.